Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. I'm Kerry Murdoch. The evolution of Miva Merchant continues. That pioneering platform, which was first launched in the late 1990s, was acquired almost four years ago by an independent investor group that included seasoned technology executives. They have moved to upgrade the platform, enhance the company's revenue, and generally ensure its long-term survival. One of those executives is Rick Wilson, now the company's president and chief operating officer, and he joins us today. Well, Rick, thank you for your time today. Hi, Kerry. Nice to speak with you as always. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Rick, your company, Miva Merchant, you've just acquired your largest hosting partner and Hostasaurus, a third-party host. My question for you is, why did you do that? Um, so... The an- there's, there's kind of two sides to the answer. The first answer is we see a steady a steady change in the marketplace um, to SaaS-based e-commerce for for your typical e-commerce provider, uh, and especially anyone doing you know, sub ten million a year in sales. And Hostasaurus was also a, our partner. They were the hosting partner that had owned part of our own hosting business that we had launched 18 months ago. And that is the other side of the answer, which is over the last 18 months, they were minority owner in our hosting business. They ran the network architecture and power and managed the servers for us, and we did everything else. And it worked exceptionally well for both sides. And a little after our one-year anniversary of being business partners, I went out to visit them and said, this has been going very well. I believe it's time for us to get married. And... Um, it took about four months from that conversation to get the deal closed, three and a half months. Um, and the reason is, the, the overriding reason is we can provide the best possible customer service experience, the best possible hosting experience, um, and, and in general, a best of breed experience to our customers this way. Uh, in fact, if you remember about a year ago, there was a blog post on PEC uh, about a Miva Merchant customer who was having a really horrible time with their host. And we had reached out to them and said, look, we can help you. And um, and we did. And I haven't checked with her in about six months, but last time I had checked, uh, her business was well on the way to recovery, and, and all of her hosting issues uh, had definitely been solved. And one of the things that we looked at when we got this company back was consistently, where are the pain points for our merchants? Where are the pain points for our customers? And... Uh, and how do we address them? And, and we feel that this is a huge move in addressing um, what would be a what could be a challenging issue depending on the quality of host you're on. Why did you pay for host to source? That I can't reveal. It's private. Are you going to buy your other host? We the- so we actually purchased host to source outright. So we mm-hmm. we now or, or merge the companies. We we are now all we we are the wholly owned. Uh, they are a wholly owned subsidiary. We are not looking to acquire other hosts in that sense. However, we do believe we will announce other client acquisitions very, very shortly, where other hosts in the MEVA space who have decided that they would prefer to sell us their MEVA client base. Uh, And yes, we do anticipate to have a a fair number of those over uh, the next 6 to 12 months. So, Rick, the the inevitable question is, Say I'm a hosting company, and my business has has been built on 
MEVA merchant licenses and uh, acquiring those MEVA merchant licenses. What's, what's the future for my business? That really depends on your business model. So we have, we have close to 200 active hosting partners on our recurring revenue plan, and it's, there's, there's a wide variety. So you have everything from the mass market hosts who um, we are just a small drop in the bucket compared to the bigger business. And I'm not sure that it would impact them much at all because the clients they get are going to them due to their advertising and marketing campaigns, which, you know, let's take Earthlink as an example. I'm certainly not going to outmarket Earthlink anytime soon. Um, on Then you have another whole set, which I think from a sheer number standpoint is our largest set. And those are the boutique hosts. And I, when I say boutique here, I mean very boutique. Five, 10, 20, 50 licenses where they're actually doing a full service offering where they are hosting that, they are building the sites, they are doing everything. You know, they really are a full service e-commerce agency, if you will. In, the, in those cases, I think you've got a couple things going on. I think they've got a decision to make, and this will actually tie into PCI compliance as well. They may want to make a decision to bring those clients over and become an affiliate of ours, and since their primary business is services and service, um, and let us take care of the expense of hosting, let us pay them some of that revenue every month, uh, and that also includes, then they will be covered by our PCI certification that we're currently undertaking in the hosting site. Um, there are some hosts, though, and while not many of them, there are a handful of hosts who effectively were middlemen, where they uh, their business model wasn't professional services, it wasn't a value-added business model. They were really filling a gap in the market that we had left unfilled for far too long. Um, for them, it's a decision they have to make. It's ultimately up to them if they want to compete with us. Um, they're certainly welcome to. We're not eliminating our hosting channel. However, uh, as a businessman, I'm not entirely sure how successful of a model that is. And, and I would argue that's true not just in the Meva merchant world, but in any world. If you're playing the role of middleman, um, it can be a difficult business to maintain over a long term anywhere. And that's true here. Rick, it's hard to believe that I think it's been four years now since the present management, you and Russ Carroll and your team took over. Has it was it two thousand and seven that the acquisition went down? It was it was August first of oh seven, so just over three and a half years. Okay. All right. Coming up in three and a half years. So time flies. What my, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Easy for me to say, right? Uh, uh, my question for you is, how's it going? Tell us, give us an overview of the company, of your sales, profits, numbers of customers. You've been at it now with, in your new role for three and a half years. Tell us how it's going. Uh, it's going very, very well. So 2010 was far and away the most successful year in the history of this company by virtually any measure. Um, we were we were very profitable. Um, our business was very stable. Uh, if you will, a lot of the changes that we had started sowing in 08 and 09 had really come come to harvest or fruition. And so 2010 was a fantastic year for us. And the business has been growing all around. Now, the for us, in our, in our scenario, we really compare ourselves to where we were in the past as opposed to worrying a lot about competitors, um, you know, be it an open source competitor that gets a ton of people, free people because they give away a free downloadable product, or even a SaaS-based competitor that offers a much lower entry price and, free, and extended free trials. Um, you know, our entry price for our hosting platform is forty nine ninety five a month. So if, you're, if that is out of your price range, we have... Um, at least here to now, have felt that that is a good denominator for the type of customers we're looking for. We want real businesses doing real volume. And if uh, if the difference of $20 a month is enough to keep you off of our platform, that, that may be okay. And so, um, so we don't really spend a lot of time comparing ourselves to the rest of the market. We just look at how we are compared to our past. And it's going very well. It took the first year we had, you know, it took, it took about 22 months to really turn the business around, so to speak, uh, and get to a profitable place from where we had taken it over. Uh, and I would say the first 12 of those 22 months, it, you know, we made a couple wrong turns and it took some, some learning. 
but all in all, it's going very well. Um, we're up to, I think as of today, about 45 employees here. Um, we don't talk about our, uh, we don't give exact revenue numbers, but they are more than double the revenue numbers we referenced to you last year. So, so we are, we are crossing into the world of eight digits and uh, and growing rapidly. So, eight digits. That's ten million. Yep. yep. All right. How many customers do you have on your platform? So that's a hard number for us to manage too, because there was so many licenses sold and distributed for so long. But let's take it from a recurring revenue basis, and, and this is always tricky because from the marketing game, you know, we like to talk about our 300,000 licenses sold, and we suspect there's somewhere between 50 and 60,000 stores out there in some form or another. But when it comes to what we have paying us money every month, there's around 20,000 stores. Okay. You, you've alluded to this next question uh, already, Rick, but there are, of course, a whole a whole slew of hosted e-commerce platforms out there. Why should a merchant pick me, the merchant? There are a whole slew of, of hosted e-commerce platforms out there, and there are about four or five we take very, very seriously. Uh, and I shouldn't, you know, I, I don't want that to come off with secrets. We take anyone seriously, I mean, but you know, as you guys have profiled many times, there are something like 600 options out there, and most of, you know, 540 of them or 550 of them have, you know, have very, very small, if any, sizable user base. So we, you know, we try to focus on the ones that we think are making a difference in some way or another, have something to offer. And sometimes that something to offer is great marketing. Sometimes it's great product. Sometimes it's all of the above. And, and so we look at that. Um, the reason why someone would choose our platform, and there, there's a number. One is we is security. Um, we have been doing this longer and processed more dollars in transactions than just about anyone in the market. Um, we don't, you know, we weren't tracking this way back when, but we estimated somewhere between five and ten billion a year in annual sales for our merchant base currently. Um, you know, if you extrapolate that over the life of the company, it's not out of the question that there's been a hundred billion in sales on the Meaver Merchant platform. In fact, at our conference here last week, um, one of the themes that came up for us is uh, some of the customers who come and who are, you know, granted, they're very, very happy customers, and that's why they're coming to our conference. They talk about the fact that they go to bed at night and they don't worry about their platform. And if you follow the Twitter feeds on some of our competitors, um, you'll notice that a lot of the SaaS platforms, either in a drive to save money or in poor architecture, they have things like downtime. And those things just don't impact us. And there's a number of reasons for that. One is we have an excellent hosting architecture. But two is every store in our world is a silo. And so we have what we consider a best of both worlds platform, where we can push out updates in a SaaS-like manner where we can update someone's store without breaking it, including all their customizations. Yet, if your store, for some reason, you know, if you, if you got on the wrong side of, of some hackers and someone launched a DDoS attack at your store, it's not going to impact my store. And I'm not going to have a single point of failure that brings down all my stores. And, and some of our very big competitors um, in the SaaS space, you know, recently they've suffered multiple multi-hour outages. Um, a very one that made the news, so I'm comfortable talking about it, is on uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, Yahoo was down for roughly six hours. Uh, and, and there's been many more since then amongst our competitors, and that is not a problem they're going to see here. You can go to bed at night and not worry about if your orders are coming in. Our platform is bulletproof. You mentioned competitors. Magento Go, Magento, yep. PayPal, they finally, they finally came clean on what everyone suspected, that the money yeah, behind I, them... I, I, Money behind I, believe you and I, I believe you and I spoke about that a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So PayPal has officially uh, invested over $20 million into that company, eBay, PayPal. Yep. Uh, they've rolled out their SaaS platform. What do you think of Magento Go, speaking of competitors? So talk about something we take seriously. Certainly we take Magento very seriously. Um, they have uh, – they – They've done a they've done a very impressive thing. Um, so let me start with Magento as a company, and I'll cross over to Magento Go. Um, so Magento stepped into a collapsing open source e-commerce market around OS Commerce and to some extent Zencart, both of which four or five years ago were the dominant open source players, and and now they they hardly exist um, as far as the lexicon goes. I mean, you still see the stores, but but Magento. Magento almost jumped into a collapsing star in the open source e-commerce world and single-handedly re-inflated around themselves. And if nothing else, um, 
Roy and the team of Magento deserve an incredible amount of praise for that because A, they've, they've, they've provided a lifeline for all those merchants, uh, and B, it's, it's hard to do. Um, as far as Magento Go goes, no pun intended, uh, I don't know much about it yet because it was, you know, it actually just went live, I think, last Thursday. Um, and so I haven't personally had a chance to play with it. I would say this. The first thing I thought about when I saw that it went live was that it was, it was both a logical move and something that at my gut strikes me that they're playing against their strengths. So their strengths are open source, PHP, and really there is a huge world of PHP developers out there who are willing to give Magento a try because they can get in there and play with the source code and they understand how it thinks. Uh, and Magento Go, from, from the little I know, uh, doesn't really play to that. It's a multi-tenant SaaS solution. It's actually a fourth iteration of their platform. So you have the free version, the professional version of 4000 a year, the enterprise version, I believe, is 15000 a year now, and now you have this fourth platform that is that doesn't have access to the underlying code like the PHP coders have. So I don't know. I, we're we're going to watch it very closely, um, and I am 100% sure they will get a huge number of people playing with it because of this uh, because of the free trials they're offering. It will be interesting to me to see if they can actually parlay their success from the open source PHP world into this. Um, it may be harder than they suspect, regardless of having access to enormous resources. Let me fast forward to the future of Miva Merchant. Will it, will it all be SaaS? Is uh, when we speak a year from now, will you have? In, will there be any Miva, Miva Merchant platforms that aren't on your aren't on your own SaaS platform? The short answer is yes. We believe that there is a very um, there's a very strong brand and product point in movability. And if someone wants to put Miva Merchant in Rackspace or if someone wants to put it in their own data center, we're not going to stop them. So um, I think from a shared hosting standpoint, um, a year is probably aggressive, but go forward two years and you may see that 80%, 85% of our customers uh, are hosted with us. But we don't foresee a day. We do not plan on, like I was just talking about with Magento, we do not plan on actually splitting the platform. If you host with us and, and outgrow us for some reason, or you become a public company and you need to control your data center um, for who knows for Sarbanes-Oxley reasons, uh, there's going to be a path for you that doesn't involve rebuilding your store. So we do not foresee a day when it's pure SaaS. Many observers uh, have told us feedback we're getting, Rick, is that the changes that present management there at Miva, in particular you and Russ Carroll have made. Those changes, however painful they've been, were in fact long overdue. And that the course Miva Merchant was on of of you know the previous business model was certainly doomed to failure and that your changes were tough decisions but necessary decisions. What do you say about all that? Well we would agree with that. Um you know, we would agree that some of the decisions were very obvious. Um, some were decisions that maybe we should have come to sooner, the hosting decision. You know, we, we actually, for better or worse, made a valiant attempt at attempting to preserve the third-party hosting model to the best of our ability and not compete with those hosts. Um, and, you know, eventually you realize you're the only one running that race and everyone else is running the SaaS-based race. Uh, and it's it's hard to ignore the market. Um, I th so so yeah, we we would generally agree that they were very difficult decisions and they were long overdue. One thing we we don't fully agree with is so we we had a huge reliance on third party developers and we've made great strides at reducing that reliance. However, that doesn't from our perspective mean that third party developers and integrations are going away. In fact, when it comes to a lot of the products that are out there, we see a lot of exciting new integrations and it's a very there's a lot of activity around there, everything from Power Reviews Express and Rate Voice, for example, on the moderated review side, to things like Runa and List Track uh, on the shopping cart re uh, recapture side. And so what we see is a huge amount of effort and, and um, fresh blood and, and life coming into the, to the add-on services, things like Strands Recommender for personalized recommendations. Um, but you're absolutely correct. If someone used to be forced to buy a third-party module to make our product work correctly, um, 
to the extent that that still exists, which is very minor, uh, those days are numbered. The last, the last word is, is yours, Rick. Anything else on your mind for our listeners, smaller e-commerce merchants? I, I guess I would say that we both appreciate the role you guys play in the community, um, that you guys provide a balanced look at the world of e-commerce. We, we appreciate the fact that you take the time to talk to us. Um, and so if there's ever anything they want to pass on to us, you know, the thing that I would say is something that we're very keen on is feedback. Um, we like to know, good, bad, or indifferent, what it is they're looking for and how we can help them. And I think they'll be surprised at the level of feedback and, and really the high-touch type service we're able to bring into a high-tech product. Okay. Well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with Rick Wilson. Rick is the President and Chief Operating Officer of Miva Merchant, Miva Merchant being the pioneering early day shopping cart that was acquired in 2007 by present management who have been transcending that product to a new SaaS platform. That's MivaMerchant.com for listeners that aren't familiar with the company. And Rick Wilson, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Miva Merchant, we want to thank you for your time today, sir. Thanks again, Carrie. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.